Do you know what's the secret inside Formula One side pods? But most of all, why every team keeps changing them this year? In this video, I'm going to tell you who invented them, what's inside them, and why in the 2023 regulations they are so important. Now, what does a side pod do? The answer is pretty simple. The Formula One side pods house the radiators. So, nothing more to say? <laughs> well, actually, there is a lot more to say, because the story is more complex. What makes the car move? The engine. And what does the engine do? It creates movement and heat. And I'm talking about tons of heat. In the back of a Formula One cars, there are multiple components that need to be cooled down. For example, the internal combustion engine needs to be cooled down because it produces a lot of heat. The fuel combustion, the pistons going up and down. But it's not the only one, because also the battery needs to be cooled down. You know, nowadays Formula One are hybrid, and the battery as well needs to be cooled. So, in a normal car, what do we do to cool down these components? We follow a very simple logic, which is recalled in the scheme. We have a closed circuit where a fluid flows, which fluid is basically water, coupled with some additives, which have the purpose of raising the boiling point. This way the water can stay above 100 degrees Celsius without boiling, because you know, having steam that flows in the pipes is not good. So the idea is simple. This fluid goes inside the engine, it gets really hot, it flows out of the engine, and it goes inside the radiators. Inside the radiators flows the air, which takes the heat away from the cooling fluid, which after being cooled down, is able to go back in the engine and the heat is transferred from the engine to the outer air. This makes us understand the first very important thing. Without the air flowing inside the radiators, the engine would not be able to cool down. So, Formula 1 cars are like the sharks. You know, they say the sharks need to keep swimming in order to breathe. So, a Formula 1 car needs to keep going in order to be cooled down. Because if the car stands still with the engine in idle, the engine will blow up. Because the only way a Formula 1 car has to keep the engine cool is by moving. Obviously, this doesn't happen on the road cars, which in many situations need to stand still. It doesn't happen in road cars because there is a fan on the radiator, so when the car is not moving, the fan is blowing the air. So why don't we put a fan in Formula 1 cars? Because it would add up extra weight, which is totally unnecessary. And keep in mind that this is true for every race car. Even with my Legend car, my Midget, my Euro NASCAR, I can't stand still for too long. Otherwise, I will cook the engine. Now, if you hear the radiator fan spinning in summer on a 70 horsepower road car, just imagine the heat that a 1000 horsepower Formula 1 car produces. You need to have super efficient radiators. And those radiators need a lot of fresh air. So just imagine to be an engineer for a moment and having to choose the best spot to put the radiators. The spot where they take the best airflow is in the front, which is actually where every road car has the radiators. So the first Formula One cars had the radiators in the front. And for many decades, the radiators were in the front. And Formula One history is very curious because some crazy designs like this one came out. But if you look at nowadays Formula Ones, you can see that the radiators are not anymore in the front. Because the idea of putting the radiators in the front was not actually the best possible solution for many reasons. First of all, the engine is in the back, the radiator is in the front. The hot fluid flowing from the engine to the radiators and back to the engine was flowing around the driver. That means that the cockpit was super hot. It was almost undrivable. Second reason, the radiator in the front was a nightmare for the performance. There was too much weight in the front making the car undrivable, and the aerodynamics was a nightmare because that radiator destroyed the aerodynamic flow of the entire car. The drag was huge, the speed was low, so something had to be invented. 40 years ago, Colin Chapman and Maurice Philippe solved the problem with the car that changed the history of Formula One. I'm talking about the Lotus 72. The idea behind the car was simply genius. Rather than having one big radiator in the front, why don't we just put two smaller ones on the side? We place them far from the front wheel, allowing them to get fresh air. That way, you can improve the aerodynamics, leaving the front free for development, and the weight balance, because all the radiator weight is in the center of the car. What was the result? Having the same power, the Lotus 72 was 20 kilometers an hour faster on the straight than the previous generation cars just by moving the radiators. And you know what? The idea was so brilliant that in a few years, every Formula 1 car 
had the radiators on the side. But you know, you, you cannot leave the radiators to the open air, you need something to cover them. So that's the reason why they created the side pods. In the beginning, in the Lotus 72, the inlet part of the side pods was carefully designed to provide the best airflow to the radiators. But the outlet part of the side pods was not designed. They were just naked. But you know, more sports is evolution. So at some point, the engineers realized that those side pods were not just a simple cover, but instead they could be designed to be an aerodynamic component. So when the ground effect cars arrived, they started to use those side pods to host the Venturi channels inside them. Then in 1984, John Barner invented the Coke bottle feature, which uh, I'll make you simple. If you look at a modern Formula 1 car from above, you can see that the rear parts resemble the neck of a Coca-Cola bottle. That's why they call it the Coke bottle design. The idea was pretty simple. They designed the side pods to become more narrow in the gearbox area in order to improve the airflow to the rear. From those moments for decades, the side pods kept changing, creating all kinds of designs. Bigger radiator intakes, smaller ones, opening in chimneys for cooling, more or less winglets coming out of the side pods themselves. And what was the target? The target was always providing the best possible cooling to the engine and maximizing the aerodynamic performance of the car. But in 2012, the side pods role changed. I mean, they were still housing the radiators, but as you know, the FIA during their years changed the regulations in order to reduce the spending of the top teams. So they dramatically reduced the downforce of the cars by simplifying the aerodynamics. So if the car aerodynamics is simplified, what does an engineer can do to improve the aerodynamic? Well, the idea that the engineers had was to design the side pods to improve the aerodynamics of the car and they took advantage of the Coanda effect. The physics behind the Coanda effect is quite simple. A fluid, like air for example, when it hits a surface, tends to follow the shape of the surface. So why don't we design the side pods to guide the air? So in 2012, the target was to guide the exhaust gases. Now, they use the side pods to guide all the airflow of the car to the rear end. But the question is why nowadays in 2023, they are so important? With the return of the ground effect and all the limitations that engineers have nowadays, the side pods became one of the most important components capable of guiding the air around the car. So their main purpose nowadays, apart from housing the radiators, is to outage the turbulent airflow coming from the front tires and maximizing the work of the floor. Because if you maximize the work of the floor, the car is faster, more balanced and more drivable. And how do you do that? Basically, in a Formula 1 car, in order to make the floor work well, you need to avoid that the outer air gets sucked into the Venturi channel. So the side pods are designed to keep the outer air away from the sides of the floor. Then they also keep the hot air coming out of the radiators away from the airflow of the car. Last but not least, thanks to the command effect, the side pods guide the air towards the downforce generating zones in the rear. So, nowadays side pods are not anymore just the housing of the radiator, but they are one of the most important aerodynamic components of the car. But there is one last secret hidden in the regulations that explains why every Formula 1 team keeps changing the side pods. As you probably know, with the budget cap, has a very limited amount of time that they can use the wind tunnel to develop the car aerodynamics. But if you need to improve the safety and the reliability of the car, you can use some extra hours in the wind tunnel. So if you want to improve the engine cooling, it means that you're improving the safety and the reliability. And where is the engine cooling located? Inside the side pods. So this is the reason why they are developing the side pods that much. Because by saying that they are improving the safety and reliability of the engine, they are also developing the aerodynamics of the car. Therefore, they are able to use more wind tunnel hours. So, this is why nowadays side pods are one of the most important components of a Formula 1 car.